So we are stepping to a new chapter called Chapter 12, and in this chapter, we will mostly cover uh, feedback and fundamental feedback. So this first lecture, let's go through the introduction and some basic concept of feedback. First of all, who invented this? Let's learn a quick history. So in 1928, there's a gentleman, his name is Harold S. Black. Um, he's white though. <laughs> um, so Harold, Harold Black invented the negative feedback amplifier while he's working for a company called Western Electric Company. This is a daughter company of AT&T. Um, so Mr. Black was trying to stabilize the gain uh, of amplifiers used in telephone repeaters at that time and he found that um, in a feedback system signal proportional to output is fed back to the input and combined with the input signal to produce a desired uh, desire response uh, so maybe uh, telephone started all of this so. Um, so why do we need to learn about a uh, feedback system? Uh, there are two types of feedback system, uh, the positive and negative, but in this chapter, in this lecture series, we're just going to focus mainly on the negative. So let's go over the advantage and disadvantage. As you can see, I give a lot more space for the advantage than the disadvantage. Um, so let's go over each one. So the first advantage is gain sensitivity. Um, so the transfer function or the gain of a amplifier circuit can actually vary due to the change in um, the transistor parameter. So in order to stabilize this gain, you can use a feedback. Uh, so the feedback circuit can help reduce the variation. Therefore, it can stabilize your gain. The second thing is the the second advantage is bandwidth extension. So bandwidth of a feedback circuit uh, is larger than its own basic amplifier. So you can have a wider bandwidth. The third advantage is noise sensitivity. Since inc incorporating feedback, you can actually increase the signal to noise ratio uh, inside the feedback loop. Actually, if the signal was originated from within the feedback loop. And the fourth the fourth advantage is reduction of nonlinear distortion. Uh, so if you are trying to work with a large signal level, uh, transistor is actually has a nonlinear characteristic and it will catch um, when you work with a large signal level, it will catch the nonlinear characteristic and it will create distortion. So these distortion actually can be fed back in the negative feedback loop to remove itself. And finally, uh, if you use a feedback amplifier circuit, uh, you have more control on designing the input and the output impedance. So you can increase or decrease it uh, with a proper type of uh, negative feedback circuit design. Now, moving to the disadvantage, we only have a couple here. The first disadvantage is the circuit gain. So if you have a normal amplifier, let's say if you have a normal amplifier uh, without feedback loop, and now you want to add a feedback loop to your basic amplifier circuit, the fact that when you add a feedback loop in, the overall amplifier gain will be lower. So now you have a lower gain. So you have to play some trick to bring that gain up to what you wish for in the beginning. The second disadvantage is stability. Okay, somebody asked, hey, you say that the gain is more stable. Of course, it's going to be more stable. However, there's a possibility that the feedback circuit can become unstable or it can oscillate uh, at high frequency. So remember when you trying to put a, a speaker, I mean, put a microphone and point that toward uh, a speaker and see what happened. Haha. <laughs> so let's cover the basic concept of feedback. Um, so this is a basic configuration of a feedback amplifier. As you can see, we have a source. The source is feed 
uh, from the input through an amplifier to the output and there's a feedback loop in here so uh, the first component is we have an amplifier right and this amplifier will have an open loop gain so conventionally this is your uh, the gain of your amplifier circuit you also have um, uh, value beta so when you build a feedback circuit you can build this circuit branch in here uh, and the transfer function of that circuit is called the feedback transfer function uh, that's going to be beta in here you have an input signal which represent for the raw source you have a feedback si signal and you have of course you have an output signal in here too i'll put a note down later and you have an arrow signal as you can see that we have a sum node in here so the arrow signal is going to be uh, the sum of this but it's actually the source input minus the feedback okay so if you can see that if we have feedback signal equal to input then we don't have any arrow <laughs> So finally we have the output and this is the basic configuration of the feedback amplifier of feedback amplifier. so um, let's examine the ideal closed loop signal gain um, so ideal means there's no loading effect signal is input signal okay noted transmitted through uh, the feedback path that means so if you see this loop in here okay in the ideal scenario the output signal is only transmitted through this path the input signal should not go in this direction okay that in so in the ideal scenario there is no transmission of signal in this direction from here to here via the feedback path so first let's examine this area in here uh, so because the amplifier amplify the amplifier actually amplify the uh, arrow signal right so we can have the output equal to a which is the uh, open loop gain multiplied by the arrow signal then if we examine this area here we can have the feedback signal equal to beta which is the trans uh, feedback transfer function multiplied by the source I mean the output signal sorry and finally examine the summation node you can have the arrow signal equal to input minus feedback so let's start with this equation uh, SO output equal to A multiplied by arrow signal. So we if we substitute arrow signal to be SI minus SFB in here, you can have this, then you can substitute SFB by beta S0 or beta S0, and you can have this equation in here. Now divided both sides for SI, which is the input signal, you can have this equation. Now if you note that you have a common ratio of S0 over SI, and you can also have a common ratio of F0, S0 over SI in here. If I call this ratio S0 over SI, which is output over input, okay. if I call that uh, AF, I can rewrite my equation like this then with a little bit of tricky manipulation like this I can figure out an, an expression for my AF based on the open loop gain and the feedback transfer function so this AF value is called closed loop transfer function or closed loop gain so that function can be written as AF equal to a over 1 plus beta a or you can call the whole group beta a to be to be t so this t value is called loop gain okay so t is defined as a multiplied by beta 
is if you do some manipulation you can also calculate t as uh, the feedback signal over the arrows okay so in this ratio in here if you see if you notice if I have a very small arrows then this uh, loop gain value will be very very large right therefore if this value is very large now my closed loop gain will can be estimated as a over a multiplied by beta it will be equal to 1 over beta okay so once again uh, closed loop gain equal to 1 over beta so just some quick note with a large loop gain uh, your output signal equal to 1 over beta input and your error is assumed to be assumed to be zero so let's go through one example together so in this case if I give you an open loop gain of a equal to 10 to the fifth which is really big then your if I have a closed loop gain is which is equal to uh, 50 now I will ask you to calculate the feedback transfer function beta so let's start with this equation of uh, AF equal A over 1 plus beta A so we can rewrite this equation right so we can put this term up put AF down put 1 to the other side then you can derive an expression for beta plucking off the number you can calculate beta to be 0.019999 a lot of 9 okay so now if I change some number now if I have a negative open loop gain and a ne and I have a negative uh, closed loop gain equal to 50 and this is negative 10 to the fifth calculate transfer function beta so plugging off number what I actually have is just negative 0.019999 and if you look in this value here you can calculate 1 over beta to be 50.025 and 1 over beta in this case will be negative 50.025 so some comments so these are typical values so with these typical value you can notice that AF is almost equal to 1 over beta uh, also also if the open loop gain is negative it will lead to the closed loop gain and the feedback transfer function AF and beta are gonna be also becoming negative so that's it for today uh, sorry because I'm just trying to pump out as many lectures as possible, possible so there will be no intro, no outro, no cat moment for a while. So I'll see you guys next time. Bye!